ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंस मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई मनोजा कुमार एंड विद मी इज सरबजीत कौर द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू रिप्लाई टू डिबेट ऑन मोशन ऑफ थैंक्स ऑन प्रेजिडेंट्स एड्रेस इन राज्यसभा टूडे प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी सेज कांग्रेस इज फॉलोइंग द पॉलिसी ऑफ डिवाइड एंड रूल एंड हैज बिकम लीडर ऑफ टुकड़े टुकड़े गैंग मोर देन फोर्टी थ्री करोड़ थर्टी फोर लैक पैन लिंक्ड विद आधार टिल जनवरी दिस ईयर कैंपेनिंग फॉर फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ असेंबली इलेक्शन इन उत्तर प्रदेश टू एंड दिस इवनिंग बीजेपी टू रिलीज इट्स मैनिफेस्टो फॉर यूपी असेंबली पोल्स इन लखनऊ टूडे फाइलिंग ऑफ नॉमिनेशन फॉर फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ असेंबली इलेक्शन इन मणिपुर टू एंड दिस इवनिंग जम्मू एंड कश्मीर गवर्नमेंट लॉन्चेज सिंगल विंडो क्लियरेंस सिस्टम इन द यूनियन टेरिटरी इंडिया कोविड वैक्सीनेशन कवरेज क्रॉसेज वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी क्रोर मार्क वीजा फ्री एंट्री फॉर इंडियन बिजनेस ट्रेवलर्स टू मॉलदीव कम्स इन टू फोर्स एंड इंडियन मेन्स टीम टू टेक ऑन फ्रांस इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू एफ आई With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others including children between 15 and 18 years to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. To commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in the morning news since 16th of August last year and will continue till 15th August this year. India Post has joined hands as the logistics partner with All India Radio News for the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. Recalling our yesterday's question, Which social reformer popularly known as Utkal Mani or the jewel of Utkal started Satyabadi school that served as a nucleus for fostering a strong national spirit among the youth of Odisha The correct answer is Pandit Gopal Bandhu Das Gopal Bandhu Das known as Utkal Mani or the jewel of Utkal was an activist journalist essayist poet reformer and social worker who actively participated in the non cooperation movement Gopa Bandhu Das was the first president of the Congress party in Odisha. It was due to his efforts that Gandhi ji came to Odisha in the year 1921. Thereafter people joined the non-cooperation movement. Subhash Chandra Bose referred to him as the father of the national movement in Odisha. AIR News got an overwhelming response from its listeners across the world and the one lucky winner of the quiz is Drishti Rani from Motibagh, New Delhi. Hello everyone. I am Drishti Rani, a first year BTech student of Indira Gandhi Delhi Technical University for Women. I have been listening to Akashwani News since class 6. In the time of social media and internet, I believe radio is still one of the best platforms to listen to while doing your work simultaneously. Listening to Akashwani News proved to be extremely helpful as it made me aware about the world around us and how it's affecting us. For me and my father, this used to be our bonding time where we used to listen to news and discuss our opinions on the same and i believe it is one of the best exercises out there to relax especially if you are a student and coming to our 52nd question of the amrit mahotsav quiz in english during the swadeshi movement a painter depicted bharat mata as a calm composed divine and spiritual ascetic figure named the painter who is also a major exponent of swadeshi values in indian art I repeat the question during the swadeshi movement a painter depicted bharat mata as a calm composed divine and spiritual ascetic figure named the painter who is also a major exponent of swadeshi values in indian art 
Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on 882-654-6262. I repeat, 882-654-6262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at the rate prasadbharati.gov.in. And the news in detail now. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will reply to the debate on the motion of thanks on the President's address in the Rajya Sabha today. President Ram Nath Kovind had addressed the joint sitting of both the Houses of Parliament on the opening day of the budget session. The debate on the motion of thanks on the President's address began on 2nd of February in the Upper House. Prime Minister Modi had replied to the debate on the motion of thanks to the President's address in the Lok Sabha yesterday. In the Lower House, the discussion on the Union Budget 2022-23 will resume today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has accused the Congress of following the policy of divide and rule and said the grand old party has become the leader of Tukre Tukre Gang. Mr. Modi made the remarks in Lok Sabha while responding to the debate on the motion of thanks to the President's address. ये नीति कांग्रेस ने अपना चरित्र बना दिया है और इसलिए ही आज कांग्रेस टुकड़े टुकड़े गैंग की लीडर बन गई है जो लोग तंत्र की प्रक्रिया से हमें रोक नहीं पा रहे हैं वो यहां अनुशासनहीनता करके हमें रोकने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं लेकिन इसमें भी विफलता मिलेगी इसमें भी विफलता मिलेगी माननीय अध्यक्ष महोदय कांग्रेस पार्टी का सत्ता में आने की इच्छा खत्म हो चुकी है लेकिन जब कुछ मिलने वाला नहीं है तो कम से कम बिगाड़ तो दो ये फिलोसॉफी पर आज निराशावादी लेकिन उस मोह में बर्बाद कर करके छोड़ेंगे इस मोह में देश में वो बीज बो रहे हैं जो अलगाव की जड़ों को मजबूत करने वाले हैं The Prime Minister charged the opposition of triggering the migrant laborers in Mumbai to move to their native places though lockdown was enforced to keep them indoors He said their movement contributed to mass spreading of the pandemic across many states Mr Modi also blamed the parties in Delhi of asking those laborers in the hutments to go back to their native villages against the lockdown norms. The prime minister urged all the political leaders and the people to rise above party lines to resolve to make the country self-reliant. He asserted that India under the NDA rule is moving forward as the fastest developing economy in the world despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr Modi said India is the biggest emerging economy. He listed out that India is attracting a record foreign direct investments. He said India is now among the five top most countries in generating renewable energy. आज विश्व के आर्थिक जगत के सभी ज्ञाता इस बात को मानते हैं कि भारत ने जिस आर्थिक नीतियों को लेकर इस कोरोना कालखंड में अपने आप को आगे बढ़ाया वो अपने आप में एक उदाहरण ही है अनुभव भी हम करते हैं हमने देखा है भारत आज दुनिया की जो बड़ी इकोनॉमीज है उसमें सबसे तेजी से विकसित हो रही बड़ी अर्थव्यवस्था है इस कोरोना कालखंड में भी हमारे किसानों ने रिकॉर्ड पैदावार की सरकार ने रिकॉर्ड खरीदी की Home Minister Amit Shah told Lok Sabha that the center has received a detailed report from the Uttar Pradesh government about the attack on the convoy of the AIMIM president Asaduddin Oweisi making a statement in the house last night about the attack that took place on the 3rd of this month he urged Mr Oweisi to accept the center's offer of a bulletproof car with a Z category security by the CRPF केंद्रीय गृह मंत्रालय द्वारा तुरंत ही राज्य सरकार से रिपोर्ट प्राप्त की गई है पहले भी कई मौकों पर केंद्रीय सुरक्षा एजेंसियों के खतरे के आकलन के आधार पर श्री ओवेसी को सुरक्षा प्रदान करने के लिए केंद्र सरकार ने निर्देश जारी किए लेकिन श्री ओवेसी द्वारा सुरक्षा लेने की अनिच्छा के कारण दिल्ली पुलिस और तेलंगाना पुलिस का उन्हें सुरक्षा देने का प्रयास सफल नहीं हो पाया है श्री ओवेसी के खतरे का पुनः मूल्यांकन कराया गया है और खतरे के आकलन के आधार पर उनको दिल्ली में बुलेट प्रूफ कार के साथ अखिल भारतीय स्तर पर केंद्रीय रिजर्व पुलिस बल की जेड श्रेणी की सुरक्षा प्रदान की गई है गवर्नमेंट हैज सेड दैट मोर देन 43 करोड़ 34 लाख परमानेंट अकाउंट नंबर्स हैव बीन लिंक्ड विद आधार टिल जनवरी दिस ईयर दिस वाज स्टेटेड बाय मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर फाइनेंस Pankaj Chaudhary in a written reply to a question in Lok Sabha yesterday he said the time limit 
फॉर लिंकिंग ऑल पैन कार्ड्स विद आधार कार्ड्स इज थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू Speaking on the difficulties involved, Mr. Chaudhary stated that there could be different reasons for difficulties in linking the PAN card with Aadhaar card faced by taxpayers. He said these inter alia may be on account of mismatch between PAN and Aadhaar details in respect of information regarding name, date of birth, and mobile number for receipt of OTP for linking of PAN. The campaigning for the first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh will end today. 58 seats will go to polls in this phase on the 10th of this month. Political parties are making their last ditch efforts to woo the voters. A report. Cacophony of campaign will fall silent this evening on the 58 seats of 11 districts of Uttar Pradesh where polling is in first phase of elections which will decide the political destiny of nine ministers of state government also it includes sugarcane minister suresh rana from thana bhavan and shrikant sharma from mathura city out of these 58 seats bjp bagged 53 last time while samajwadi party and bahujan samaj party got two seats each and one seat went to rashtri lok dal today also senior leader leaders and star campaigners of all political parties will hold door to door poll campaign and address small rallies meanwhile bharatiya janata party will release its election manifesto today at lucknow senior bjp leader and union home minister chief minister yogi adityanath along with other ministers will also be present on the occasion sushil chandra tiwari air news lucknow senior bjp leader and prime minister narendra modi will address the voters of rampur badaun and sambhal of uttar pradesh virtually through jan chopal program at 5 pm today mr modi will virtually address voters of ferozpur and ludhiana in punjab at 3:30 pm he is also scheduled to address voters of utham singh nagar and nainital in uttarakhand virtually at 2 pm Senior BJP leader and Union Home Minister Amit Shah will release party's election manifesto at Lucknow today. BJP President Jagat Prakash Nadda will address two public meetings at Murida Fartoda and Navilim in Goa today. The filing of nominations for the first phase of assembly elections in Manipur will end today. More details from our correspondent. With only one day left for the submission of nomination papers for the first phase, many candidates filed their nomination papers yesterday. More than 80 candidates submitted their nomination papers to the concerned returning officers, and the total number of candidates who have filed nomination paper for the first phase poll has crossed 120 till yesterday. In the first phase, voting for 38 assembly constituencies will be held on 27 of this month. Meanwhile, a team of election commission of India led by Chief Election Commissioner of India Sushil Chandra arrived at Imphal on two days visit to the state yesterday he was accompanied by Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar and Anup Chandra Pandey Jaye Sachom AIR News Imphal Campaigning for assembly elections in Goa has reached its peak the state will go to polls on the 14th of this month campaigning pattern in the state has changed this time political parties and contestants are using various social media platforms aggressively to woo the voters more details from our correspondent All the major political parties including the ruling BJP Congress Aam Aadmi Party and Trinamool Congress have stepped up their election campaigning via social media by using digital advertisement video clip and WhatsApp group although door to door canvassing by their leaders is continuing the parties are now giving preference to their digital outreach to people they have augmented the strength of their social media sales by bringing in more social media warriors for virtual rallies and more interactive with voters from facebook live to instagram reels to whatsapp group the contestants in the goa electoral battlefield are using various social media platform aggressively to direct their messaging to voters krishn kumar lal air news panji goa you are listening to the morning news on all india radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on Prime Minister to reply to debate on motion of thanks on president's address in Rajya Sabha today Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Congress is following the policy of divide and rule and it has become leader of tukde tukde gang more than 43 crore 34 lakh pan linked with aadhar till january this year campaigning for the first phase of assembly elections in uttar pradesh to end this evening 
BJP to release its manifesto for UP Assembly polls in Lucknow today. Filing of nominations for the first phase of Assembly elections in Manipur to end this evening. Jammu and Kashmir government launches single window clearance system in the Union Territory. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 170 crore mark. Visa-free entry for Indian business travellers to Maldives comes into force. And Indian men's team to take on France in 2022 FIH Pro League Hockey in South Africa today. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख। आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय? आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प। और अब तो आप घर, दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग। आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता। बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो। वेलकम बैक टू द मॉर्निंग न्यूज़ ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो। जम्मू एंड कश्मीर लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर मनोज सिन्हा लॉन्च्ड जेएनके सिंगल विंडो क्लेरेंस सिस्टम www.singlewindow.jk.gov.in येस्टरडे। Our correspondent reports that the JNK Single Window Clearance System is a historic move by the UT government to facilitate investments in Jammu and Kashmir. As many as 130 industrial services have been made online on a single window system and more than 160 services would be integrated this year. The Lieutenant Governor reiterated government's commitment to strengthen the industrial ecosystem in a manner that the benefits percolate to all sections of society in JNK. JNK is the first union territory to be integrated with a national single window system. Now, global investors can apply for all their business approvals in JNK through the national single window system. The government has said that more than 86 lakh passengers have travelled under the regional connectivity scheme Ure Desh Ka Aam Nagrik or Uran till January this year. Uran is a flagship scheme of the Ministry of Civil Aviation envisaged to make air travel affordable and widespread in the country. The scheme was launched in October 2016 to provide connectivity to unserved and underserved regions through revival of existing airstrips and airports. Minister of State for Civil Aviation Vike Singh said this in a written reply to a question in Rajya Sabha yesterday. He said out of 948 valid routes, 403 routes involving 65 airports have been operationalized across the country under Uran. The minister said the scheme has sparked significant increase in helicopter services in hilly areas and islands through use of heliports. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव आजादी का सफर विद एआईआर न्यूज़ बर्थ ऑफ अ नेशन इंडियाज ग्लोरियस फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट स्ट्रगल्स द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड हैज एवर विटनेस्ड एआईआर न्यूज़ ब्रिंग्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द स्ट्रगल एवरी डे In today's episode, we pay tributes to freedom fighter Kalpana Datta, who died on 8th February 1995. Datta was one of the members of Master Da Surya Sen's revolutionary group, Indian Republican Army. <laughs> In September 1931, Surya Sen entrusted her along with Preeti Lata Vadidhar to attack the European club in Chittagong. A week before the attack, she was arrested while carrying out a survey of the area. She went into hiding after her release on bail. On 16 February 1933, the police encircled their hiding place. 
During this raid, Surya Sen was arrested, but Kalpana managed to escape. Kalpana was finally arrested on 19th May 1933. In the second supplementary trial of the Chittagong Armory raid case, Kalpana was sentenced to transportation for life. She was released in 1939. She graduated from the Calcutta University in 1940 and wrote an autobiographical book in Bengali which was translated into English as Chittagong Armory Raiders Reminiscence. We salute the great freedom fighter. We remember educationist and former president of India, Zakir Hussain, who was born on February 8, 1897 in Hyderabad. On Mahatma Gandhi's appeal, Zakir Hussain helped found the Muslim National University in Aligarh, which was later moved to New Delhi as Jamia Millia Islamia University and served as its Vice Chancellor from 1926 to 1948. The institution was intimately involved with India's struggle for freedom from the British rule and experimented with value-based education on the lines advocated by Mahatma Gandhi and Hakim Ajmal Khan. At Gandhi's invitation, he also became the chairman of the National Committee on Basic Education established in 1937 to design a Gandhian syllabus for schools. After independence, Hussein became the vice-chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University in 1948. He was appointed Governor of Bihar State in 1957, elected Vice President of India in 1962 and was elected the third President of India in 1967. Zakir Hussain died on 3rd May 1969, the first Indian President to die in office. We also remember one of the youngest martyrs, Lakshman Bhikaji Godbole, who died on 8 February 1943. Bhikaji was born in 1927 in Akola City, Maharashtra and was still in school when he joined the Quit India Movement in August 1942. He was arrested by the British while distributing the leaflets demanding the withdrawal of British from India. He was arrested and sentenced to six months rigorous imprisonment. He could not bear the heavy police tortures and died in the Akola jail on 8 February 1943. We salute the great martyr. Fighter Soon Bucks was executed by British on 8 February 1858 for participating in the first war of Indian independence in 1857. A resident of the Awadh province, now Uttar Pradesh, he fought in the Delhi region and also provided financial help to other freedom fighters. He was caught by the British troops during their reoccupation of Delhi in September 1857 and put on trial. He was sentenced to death and executed. We sent To the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmarked Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404, issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. Jago Grahak Jago India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 170 crore mark. Over 170 crore 15 lakh doses have been administered till now. The Health Ministry said more than 50 lakh 48,000 vaccine doses were administered yesterday. 
It said more than 1 crore 52 lakh 95 thousand precaution doses for the identified categories of beneficiaries have been administered so far. Maldives has announced that the visa-free entry for Indian business travellers to the island nation comes into effect. In a statement, the Maldivian Foreign Ministry said, starting from the 1st of this month, it has commenced the process of granting Indian nationals visa-free entry for business purposes for a period not exceeding the visa-free period of 90 days. This is according to the agreement on the facilitation of visa arrangements between both the governments signed on the 17th of December 2018. The Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Bombay, has announced to establish India's first National Centre of Excellence in Carbon Capture and Utilisation, NCECCU, with support and funding from the Union Ministry of Science and Technology. It is the country's first such centre, funded by the Union Government, formally sanctioned in last December. Indian men's hockey team will kickstart their campaign against France in the season opener of the 2022 FIH Pro League today in Potchef Room, South Africa. The match will start at 9.30 p.m. Indian time. The hockey tournament is to take place in Potchef Room, South Africa till 13th of this month. After France, the Manpreet Singh-led Indian side will face host South Africa tomorrow. India will again play France on the 12th of this month before concluding the tour with the second match against South Africa on the 13th of this month. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. Srinagar will have generally cloudy sky, temperature will hover between 2 and 9 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have mainly clear sky, minimum temperature was 9 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 18 degrees. Leave will have partly cloudy sky. Minimum and maximum temperature will hover between minus 13 and minus 2 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky. The temperature will hover between 2 and 13 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have generally cloudy sky. Minimum temperature was 6 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 18 degrees. And now an overview of today's newspapers. All the dailies have covered the Prime Minister's long reply in the Lok Sabha yesterday. Tearing into the Congress, the PM said, it is promoting division in the country and politicizing the pandemic, writes the Hindu. Three-point seat belts in cars could be made mandatory even for middle seat at the back to make cars safer, writes the Hindustan Times. A top front page Economic Times headline says, indices tank 1.7% over strong US jobs data. Aadhaar not must for vax registration on COVID, cites the pioneer. Double-decker buses could return to roads as DTC sends proposal to Transport Department, reports the Indian Express. The Asian Age reports about the Madhya Pradesh city taking its historical name, Hoshangabad, renamed as Narmadapuram. For Chinese fans, Lata was a window to India, becoming a cultural bridge for many, is an inspiring headline in the Hindu. And finally, arrive in style. New facility at Terminal 1 will be bigger and better, writes the Times of India about the new flying experience at Delhi Airport. Before we end the bulletin, a reminder of today's question of the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. During the Swadeshi movement, a painter depicted Bharat Mata as a calm, composed, divine and spiritual ascetic figure. Name the painter, who is also a major exponent of Swadeshi values in Indian art. I repeat... During the Swadeshi movement, a painter depicted Bharat Mata as a calm, composed, divine and spiritual ascetic figure. Name the painter who is also a major exponent of Swadeshi values in Indian art. WhatsApp your response on 882-654-6262 or through email on Amrit Mahotsav quiz at the rate prasadabharati.gov.in. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister to reply to debate on motion of thanks on President's address in Rajya Sabha today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Congress is following the policy of divide and rule and it has become leader of Tukre Tukre Gang. More than 43 crore 34 lakh PAN linked with Aadhaar till January this year. Campaigning for first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh to end this evening. BJP to release its manifesto for UP assembly polls in Lucknow today. Filing of nominations for first phase of assembly elections in Manipur to end this evening. Jammu and Kashmir government launches single window clearance system in the Union Territory. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 170 crore mark. Visa-free entry 
for Indian business travellers to Maldives comes into force and Indian men's team to take on France in 2022 FIH Pro League Hockey in South Africa. And with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day.